Welcome back. Right, it's bee time now. Uh, apparently more people than ever are turning their hand to beekeeping. One reason people are, are taking it up as a hobby is to save the great British bee from becoming extinct. Well, one such person is broadcaster and amateur beekeeper Martha Carney, who is now urging others to take up the hobby in order to help save British bees from becoming extinct. To my untrained eye, the queen is very hard to spot amongst the rest of the bees. But this hive does seem to be doing very well. I'm so much more pleased by this one than the first one. The first one, there just wasn't any of this brood. So this is a proper, healthy, lively colony, which is great. Is that the queen? There's the queen. I spotted her. Well done. I spotted her. I've never done that. Oh, do you know, this is so unusual, I can't tell you. <laughs> we mark the queen with ink so she'll be easier to spot next time. So Martha joins us now today along with the urban beekeeper Barnaby Shaw who has three hives on top of the National Theatre here in London. It's about three doors down from us and welcome. Welcome. Is this, welcome. Is this a wedding present for you initially? It was a mad wedding present. A group of friends got me a hive, that outfit, the smoker and I thought what on earth am I going to do with that? So I shoved it to the bottom of the garden, painted it and thought it would be rather a nice ornament. And then I met a beekeeper and she said you can do it and taught me how to do but it. Did those friends when they gave you that hive realise that you were in fact allergic to bee stings, as <laughs> I am I. No, no, and I didn't realise either. It was only after I'd been stung a few times and it swelled up that I realised oh. I had actually a little bit of a problem. But, but I checked it with my doctor and she says I'm still fine to keep bees as long as I carry an, an EpiPen. Yeah. But you didn't get off to a very good start to begin with because it's not that easy. You did have a few complications. I did. I think I was a bad beekeeper without realising it. The first year I, I went back after the spring to open them up and they were all dead. I was really upset. My husband said, oh, look, you're bereaved. It's very unpleasant, uh -huh. isn't it? <laughs> and I think what I think I'd done wrong, and Barnaby, I'm sure, would agree with me, I hadn't fed them enough, because you, you take the bees, some of the bees' honey away, and then you're supposed to feed them with a lot of sugar syrup before the winter, and uh -huh. I just didn't give them enough. So and I learnt my lesson. And the wasps got another lot. The wasps got another lot. I do not like wasps. I know they pollinate as well, but I'm not very keen on wasps. Mm. My friend had a wasp nest under her hive, and they went and attacked mine as well. <gasps> Later on this season, and the wasps go for the bees and go for their honey. So wow. it's uh, lots of ups and downs. Because you look at it and you're going to talk us through um, the sort of process and the stages. Uh, how difficult is it to start up? Um, it's, it's relatively difficult. There's a lot of information you need to kind of grasp and get. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's quite tricky. Getting the bees can be an issue. Where, at do, times. You get, where do you order bees from? Um, there are bee suppliers. There's local associations who will supply uh, swarms or nucleuses like we've brought in today. Um, okay. So, yeah, there's, and you can also get a queen bee by post. I've done yeah. that. <laughs> really? And my postman was rather alarmed when I said, do you know what's in there? And it was a queen bee. Uh, so you oh went up gosh. with, would you start with one queen bee? No, no, that was when I'd lost a queen. Oh, and right, I okay. needed to see needed a queen yeah. back, back yeah. in the thing. Um, and because, I mean, it's really important that we keep bees alive because there are so many things that rely... W w is it one in three mouthfuls uh, have been, are there isn't... because it's been pollinated by bees? It's true. Bees pollinate a huge amount of the crops that we need. Mm. Most fruit, lots of cereal crops. It's incredibly important. And they are in trouble. Why? They're in trouble for a variety of reasons. One big thing is a horrible insect. It's called a mite, a varroa mite. If you imagine something the size of a dinner plate on your back, sucking out your blood and then oh. poisoning your bloodstream, that's what the poor bees have to cope with. So there's that. There's the loss of their habitat. You know, wildflower meadows don't exist anymore. Climate last year, terrible long wet winter they didn't like. And then there is a debate about whether pesticides cause problems as well. But they thrive in cities, in urban areas. I mean, this isn't just for the countryside. This is for anyone anywhere. Absolutely, yeah, they do thrive in, in urban areas. Uh, it's quite a good kind of uh, extended season of, of growing in the urban, uh, urban setting. So, so, yeah, and it's a warmer climate, like uh, Martha just mentioned as well. Where's the queen? Where's the queen? So the queen should be somewhere in this frame here. And we're going to spot her. Oh, because I can see her. She's where? got a lot. There, she's there. Look, she's, she's got. She's, it's like, she's, where's Wally? There. <laughs> <laughs> there she is. She's got the red dot on her back. Oh, yeah. You've put that on there, have you, so we know who it is? Yes, exactly, yeah. This is a red a mark indicating that she was born last year, so, uh, so yeah, we She's got a little crown. Last year. She's a little crown on her head. <laughs> yes. And what does she do? What, why is she so important to a so, hive? So she's the mother, the mother bee, really. So she's the one female within this colony who will lay the eggs, and mm. hopefully we, we will see, um, or you can see if the cameras go close, the brood cluster. So she will be laying uh, the eggs, and the other workers will be uh, maintaining and feeding um, the young and, and raising them. 
really. And, and at the height of the summer, she can lay 2,000 eggs a day. Wow. Quite yeah. incredible. You'd oh think, really, and now you can see, I think she's laying now because she just keeps... Uh, I think you're right, Philip. Yeah. Yeah. Is she? How do you know that? Well, because like, she's poking her rear end into those little... Uh, those yeah, little the abdomen's a hexagonal longer. cells. Yeah. Um, yeah. She's not bigger. You would imagine that the Queen would be markedly bigger than the workers around her, wouldn't you? Yeah, she's about a, a time and a half, I suppose, or two times the size of a, a normal worker. But yeah, she's not, ex you know, greatly, vastly bigger. But um, the the important part, the abdomen, is a lot bigger, really. Than... If you have, you decide that you want a hive in your garden. Mm -hmm. Do you do you end up with great swarms of bees That's around your know. house? Hopefully not. If if uh, hopefully beekeepers at this time of year, from from uh, April to to kind of June, are are trying to. Uh, do swarm control to, to, to manage that and how prevent you, that from how do you, happening. How do you control a swarm? Because you've uh, had that, haven't you? So it's something that <laughs> I've had swarm. I've had a load of friends around for lunch and I had, had, had heard this very loud noise from the bottom no, of the garden. And there no. was a funnel of the bees right going up into the garden. And they, they often go into the most awkward places, don't yeah. they? So these ended up at the top of a, of a hawthorn tree and I had to go up there with a ladder. It was no, all very wobbly. In the end, I sent my husband And how do you get them back? Hat? You, you to put them in a box. So you put them in a box and hopefully the queen is with them and then you put them back into the original well, hive why, or what, put them into what, a new hive. Why were they moving in the first place? It's their natural form of reproduction. So what happens is when a hive or a colony gets quite big, the old queen will fly off with some of the other bees to ah. form a different... And then the new queen remains behind. She mates with the drones. They're the males. They're useless. And then it's the only thing they do is mate. And then she comes back to the hive and lays her eggs. Uh, what happens if the one's on top of the National Theatre? Dig, dig, dig. Go. <laughs> um, well, hopefully I can go rescue them and bring them back and hive them again. But, but where um, are they going to go? They're but, just going to fly off down the Thames. I, I'm not too sure, really. Um, <laughs> maybe, that, maybe to a London plane tree a good or... Thing, <laughs> though? Wouldn't you let them go? Because if you're <clears> trying <throat> to encourage more bees into the natural environment, you let them swarm and there's a new hive off there. Like I say, we're trying to manage that, but it is quite a magnificent site and like Martha says as well it's it's natural uh, propagation of the hive so it is what they're trying to do instinctively and and it is quite an interesting site but in, in public areas like South Bank it's not a good element. you've, you've got to the traditional prevent. which looks lovely there the traditional hive there if I was gonna have one I think I'd yeah that's one that's mine they're called WBC's they're mine they're the ones that I have they're I like a little one. bit more work but they do look very pretty. but then um, you've got this one which is a bit more functional but just sort of a bit more boxy yes yeah, is a British uh, standard hive uh, which we generally generally in, in the UK, we keep this style of hive really. So it's only um, a one walled hive, uh, not a double walled like the WBC. If you take the top of that one and just show us sure. the, the makeup of it. So oh, be careful! The... <laughs> 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 the crown wall. <laughs> and then we've got um, super frames um, below here. So this is where the bees would store the honey, uh, safely in the next month or so. Yeah. If we prevented swarming, uh, hopefully we might get some, some honey um, being put in here, placed in here by the... Uh, exactly. Did you see they're all exactly the same size? Yeah. They're, this oh, hexagon is just, so just incredibly yeah. efficient way of storing And then honey. underneath that, then that's you've got the business end for the colony where they've got Absolutely. the this is queen where, and the babies and the whole thing is This is where the population's being raised and uh, the, the, the sheet you see here, this um, section is the queen excluder and that prevents the queen from laying up. up right. uh, and these above. are much bigger frames, aren't they? These are, <coughs> these, yeah. these are the brood frames. These are bigger than the ones that you get in. And then in some the of the products, are obviously, what we're all looking for is the honey at the <coughs> end. You've brought in... You, you're not supposed here. to eat this because you're pregnant. Apparently so. Allegedly. It's very oh, annoying, isn't it? Annoying. But uh, I can. Because I'm not. <laughs> Isn't it certain honeys, I think, um, pasteurised or something like that? Uh, what have we got? I don't know. Well, you can see the different kinds of honey, even just by looking at the colours. So here, first of all, this is heather honey, so it's very dark. There's a particular kind of honey, when the bees' hives are placed in, in lots of heather, they will make honey this colour. So there you go. Do you want to try that one? Yeah. It's a rather a strong that nice? um, taste. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Talk me through it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Um, oh, that's gorgeous. Oh, wow, that is, that is, that, strong. is, that is very strong. I mean, I'm not so keen on the strong ones. I think I'm more interested... Now, this is the one that's made by uh, Barnaby. So that's from... Ah, uh, is it yours? Bee Urban Honey, and that is from uh, a London park, isn't yes, it? Yes, it's from so Myersfield Park. Isn't it good for hay fever? Yeah, much you have hay fever, you're supposed to eat your local honey, or is that a bit of a myth? Um, it, it's not proven, but I think it's a, a very good, uh, good myth idea. that I think people should do. <laughs> um, definitely, there is, there's pollen trace elements mm. in there. And I love that one. The nectar is from the flowers as well. So if, if you do, I've, I've um, been told by friends that it has helped them. So, really? Um, yeah, really? Oh, okay. It's really flowery and fragrant. So where, really would, where would they have gone to, to, to get that? What, what are they um, in an in urban area? Yeah, so the, the, 
all bees will fly up to a radius of three miles, probably a shorter wow. distance to forage. Um, so they will go to local sources. So we're located, or this honey's, or the, this hive, or these hives are um, located in an urban uh, park. So there should be loads of bedding plants there and uh, local kind of. It's almost there. minty. It's There's sort of a minty yeah, taste to it. Well. It's, it's lovely, really lovely. Isn't it? And then of course we've got this is like gorgeous. That? You can eat honeycomb like that. This is um, with the wax. I think um, one is from this is from the London Honey Company. So this is urban honey, and then this is countryside honey. Do you just eat Because you end up with what a little plug of like? wax after you've done it. You end it's up true. with them. Yes, I, yeah, I, what, and yeah. What then you spit it out? Well, yeah, I expect so. Are you supposed <laughs> to eat it. You can, you can do some do people, it's, some it's people like yeah, really yeah. So yes, oh, right. really I never didn't know that. There you go, um, so. And then and then we've got honey beer. Honey beer, yes, absolutely. Um, all sorts of alcohol can be used with honey. You get honey vodka, you get mead, you get... Um, and it's interesting because this isn't particularly sweet, is it? It's quite dry. It's, very, it's got very good hints of honey. Uh, this is from Hiver Beer. It's oh, very I good. bet it's lovely. Yeah. And yeah. then we've got honey candles here, which honey are real candle. beeswax. And beeswax used to be one smell? of the main forms of life. Oh, it does! So you either have the choice Beautiful. between beeswax or animal fat, just yeah. and obviously beeswax is much nicer, smells much yeah, more beautiful, yeah, doesn't yeah, it? Lovely. And also um, it burns down in a very even way, and it's incredibly important for churches, and churches still use beeswax. I interviewed the Archbishop of Canterbury, and he said beeswax and bees are very, very important to the whole history of the church. Oh, what a lovely. lovely thing Thank to do. Thank you for bringing um, them in. Thank you. It's mm -hmm. Your programme, Martha, I've got it written on here, The Wonder of Bees, um, is Monday at 8 on BBC4. It's in four parts. Thank you very Thank much you. indeed for coming we'll in. Look out we'll the watch out for your uh, your Swarm bees. Of bees coming down towards us. <laughs> Hopefully right. that's not going to happen. We'll send them back. And if anybody's interested in keeping bees themselves but a bit worried about all of this, they can always adopt a hive. And oh, then they get sent jars of honey. It's a very nice scheme. Oh, that's so a there good you idea. are. Oh, a a idea. All of those details, if you want to find out more about bees, have a look at our website. Right.